There we go. All right, it's on this time with NVIDIA Broadcast. Hello, everybody. Zeno here. We are going to test out the new eye tracking feature that's in beta right now for NVIDIA Broadcast. NVIDIA Broadcast, if you did not know, is this feature that adds special features to your camera that uses um, neural, neural network learning to actually enhance your camera in several ways. One of the more famous ones is to do background removal, which... As you can tell in the recording right now, I just removed the background using a video broadcast right now. It's pretty good. It's just the only problem is there's a few things you have to enable to actually get this to work properly while you're like streaming a video game, for example. Anyway, that's a video broadcast. The main feature we're going to be showing off today is the vignette thing they added and the eye contact um, beta. So eye contact is basically what it's going to do is generate a fake set of eyes over my eyes and make it so I will forcibly look towards the camera this is creepy just because to me looking at the camera the entire time doesn't sound human you know i always look to the left here on my obs screen to make sure things look okay things aren't crashing things aren't frame skipping i do that a lot especially when i stream so when i enable this which i've honestly have used before it will make me look towards the camera and then sometimes jitter back and forth depending on how much i move so when I enable it here in about four seconds, I will show you if you can see my eyes quickly jet or not. The best for way, I just turned it on. The best way for me to describe this is to actually move my little preview camera so I can look at myself, look down a little bit, but I'm still looking at the camera to you guys. Okay, I'm going to disable it in three, two, one. That's where I'm looking. I'm looking down this way, but you can see my eyes. I'll turn it back on. It's slowly moving my eyes up towards the webcam, even though I'm not even looking at the webcam. It's a lot less useful than I thought it would be because when I look over here to my OBS preview screen to the left, it doesn't really move my eyes that much or it's not showing it that well. So you can definitely tell it, it keeps trying to transition and like you can tell when it puts a fake layer of eyes over me. So if I try and keep my face like this way and slowly look towards this, um, what do you call it? This monitor, geez, my brain ain't working today. You can tell where it keeps trying to, um, generate a fake set of eyes. So I'm going to disable it in three, two, one. On, off. Wow, it's actually a pretty poor example. Look, it worked a lot better on one of my older videos. I actually might show that footage here in a second, but um, on. I wonder if it's just because I'm not bright enough or something. Off, on. Okay, me having this slightly angry look is helping it a lot for some reason. So it's on. I'm looking towards the camera even though I'm not really. Off. On. Oh, it flickered there. See, the, the weirdest part is when you break you break contact and it like delayers the second set of eyes over your eyes. I think that's the creepiest part about this is <laughs> other than the fact that it's not like artificially moving my eyes toward the camera, it's generating a fake set of eyes that look like my eyes. So seeing um, like a second layer of eyes disappear when the immersion is broken is probably the most jarring thing about it. So if I constantly look over here, look straight, look this way, look straight, it's hard for me to tell without looking at the preview screen, but I wonder how often this breaks immersion. It seems like it's mostly designed for people who, let's say, focus on the game more than the screen. So let's say you're playing like Apex Legends or something and you really are in the middle of a fight right now. For some reason, if you wanted this filter on to make it look like you're watching the audience, which is what I would envision the webcam to be, you're looking at the audience instead of the game, which looks really creepy to me. It doesn't look right, especially if they make this work way better in the future, because this is obviously a really, really early version, especially if it's breaking eye contact so easily with me just looking to the left here. Um... If they ever get this actually working in the future, I think it's just going to be creepy to have a lot of people utilize this. I have a feeling this is literally just for, um, what do you call it? I wouldn't call it shock factor, but it's just something that doesn't look right, especially when it's broken. So if somebody is staring at you the whole time and they're wondering why, other than the fact when they blink, they're not looking at the camera, <laughs> something doesn't feel right about that. Something just doesn't feel human. I have to keep saying that. Just the fact that constantly staring at somebody just doesn't feel human you would want to constantly break eye contact when you talk to somebody because if you need to help think to get your mind off something something about that just is a lot more natural instead of constantly staring at them in the face while it happens anyway um uh, we're gonna move on to the vignette feature this one is um a little more useless i would say 
but um, I'm going to leave the eye contact on to see how often it breaks contact while I'm doing the vignette feature here. But we're going to turn it on. Obviously, you get this vignette here. Um, this is an easy feature to enable in like OBS in general. It's an easy overlay you can put. The main gimmick for NVIDIA Broadcast's new feature for the vignette is the face tracking, which I would not know what what scenario you would want this in. <laughs> but when you turn it on, when you move, it moves the vignette around. So you actually get the, the black going around and tracking your face. The only thing I can think of is this is like a barrel going down. You're looking down a, a scope of a barrel and like, oh, jeez, this guy's still aiming at me. What am I going to do? <laughs> but you can change the strength on it and stuff like that so it doesn't look so uh, in intense when you turn it down. So it, it just makes it very subtle. I could see it working on a little bit of a niche factor, especially when it's this low. It just helps draw attention to your face. But the processing power required to track your face, I feel like wouldn't be worth it, especially if you're gaming. This is literally probably only good for people who have, like Twitch stream on just their face, their vlogging or something. Only reason why I feel like you would use that. Something like the blur background, I feel like is just a lot more effective because it helps focus you directly while eliminating your eyes to want to wander. Oh, wow. You know, I think I've realized they've iterated on um, the blurring a lot better. Usually there'd always be like a halo around my fingers. So this new version obviously has done a lot better with the previous features on here. So if we go back to background removal, I bet, it, or replacement, you know, uh, I do a thing on my Twitch streams where I have, it makes it look like I'm streaming in Link's house. It's one of my favorite things. Look how much better that green screening is. Jeez, why didn't they highlight this? Honestly, the eye tracking thing, sure, that's, I wouldn't call it controversial, but it'd be an easy way to get journalists' attention to spread the news that NVIDIA Broadcast is evolving. But this has done so much better. If you've seen the older versions of this, people have it where there's halos around it all the time. Look, look, I hit performance mode, and it's, it's haloing a lot better. Oh, there goes my fingers. There you go. So that's the performance mode. It's just, it's actually keying me up so much better now. Never realized it was that effective. But, um... Now we're going to turn that off, and there we go. That's NVIDIA's new uh, feature, so you can obviously tell. It, it would be a little awkward for you to actually stare at my eyes the entire video, but if you've noticed how often it's broken immersion by having it look away and unrendering a second se uh, pair of eyes, like I've said for the 5,000th time this video, eye contact is weird, and I would honestly almost want to tell people if they're using this, especially in live streams, to tell people that you are. So if they see your eyes are doing something weird or fake, you're not a robot, you're not an android. <laughs> Don't get some conspiracy hat theories going on here. It's just some weird AI thing that people are trying to learn and want to utilize for some reason. Last thing I want to say before I end the video is I feel like this is the best. This could be best exploited, especially if it gets better over time, to have somebody use this in like a Zoom call or something. If you're having an interview, if you're at school and you need to constantly show with the teacher you're paying attention instead of like looking down or something which see it doesn't work very well right now but imagine you're like typing or you're looking away at a different monitor while you're trying to do you're in a call where you need to pay attention this is a good way to fake it i guess i think it's better but um other than that cool feature found a way to stretch the video out for this long so thank you for watching if you did and i'll see you in another video in the future because this is just weird tech that i'm into so see you guys later xeno is out Staring at you from afar. <laughs> Left in my monitor, so I can. I'm looking at the NVIDIA broadcast settings, but it looks like I'm looking at you, right? I'm gonna turn it off in 3, 2, 1, off. On. Off. On. That is. Vignette. Ooh! <laughs> okay, that's kinda cool.